going to go on anymore because I'll get the first guest up, who is Miles Dyer. Play the clip. <laughs> Hey, my name is Miles Dyer. I'm 22 from South East England in a town called Reading, and this is my YouTube story. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Miles. As a lot of On the 14th of August 2006, I posted my first video blog after seeing so many video responses to the well-known video "First Try" by Geriatric 1927. I was just amazed by the way that people were able to communicate freely their ideas through video form. Hello. Hello. <laughs> is, that the, is that the end of it, though? Is that the end of your clip? I don't know. I assume that's what they've done with it, yeah. Oh, right, oh, good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it from there. So, I want to know, I mean, because we're obviously from a very different generation. I'm sure I'm older than your dad. Um, what, the, what, what, so, when, when, when did you first become aware of YouTube in particular? It, it was three years ago. Um, Peter, who's Jerry Atchie, 19, um, 27, he, he'd done this video. Um, and although it was his video that interested me, what interested me more was the fact that people were able to post video responses. Yes. And for me, what that is, um, it shows what YouTube has, which a lot of you know, other places don't have, which is the YouTube experience. And that is, these aren't just videos we're dealing with. This is, um, there's something in between it. There's this social network. Um, and it's now a medium in which people can share their ideas. Um, and for me, video blogging um, is the purest form of creativity because whether you are a reporter, you do philosophy, you do music, um, you're an artist, um, you can incorporate these in any combination into a video. And I think that's why when you meet people across the board, around the world, um, like I've done in gatherings, um, we all have this common denominator. So everyone has this way of being open-minded to new ideas uh, and being able to share um, their views on the world. And, I mean, what, um, I mean, do you, do you have, a, like, a particular, like, a manifesto then? I mean, would you say that you have a sort of a thing that you want to communicate? Um, well, my motto is... Um, Welcome to my world where all have the chance to inspire, which probably does sound a bit hippie-ish, um, <laughs> but it's just the way it is. And um, for me, it is that, you know, we all have a voice. Um, for me, it's my journey of being used to this technology. Um, I have as much of a clue as the next person to a certain degree. Uh, and it is, you know, I feel that if I put myself out there, uh, then people have no reason to judge anything else. But, you know, people always misjudge me. Um, but it's sort of my journey using this technology um, to help others and give people confidence. And I mean, and do you find that if you get negative comments, which I'm assume, I, I haven't read any of your negative comments, oh, but there I'm assuming there, there might be some there. I mean, but do you find that, that it dampens you, or does it actually go, oh, no, hang on? Um, the first year, or first two years, actually, it, it did get to me quite a lot, and I think the part of it that got to me most is because I'm not... I don't, I, you know, I do comedy videos, but it is me being open, this is who I am, um, that people are challenging my integrity. Uh, and where you've got TV shows where people are behind, you know, by the time it's probably put on TV, they're already working on something else completely yeah. different. As with me, I'm checking the next day and people go, you know, you're a liar, you're doing this because um, you just want fame for the sake of it. Um, these are questions about, you know, who am I? Yeah. And um, I get to see myself in third person, so what I do is I translate what they say and look at myself and go, well, have they got it right? Have I misinterpreted myself wrong? Um, but up to this point now, I've got a better idea, and uh, I take things on if they're constructive. <laughs> and I mean, do you find when you've shot something, do you do you absolutely put up what you shoot, or do you kind of self? I mean, this is I think it's yeah. a fascinating area, the self-editing. Well, this is it's it. a fairly recent experience for the human race, I think. Completely, um, and you know, I, I do edit it, and it depends on what sort of aspect you're trying to portray. Um, for me, it is about honesty. Um, and I try and only edit out the ums and the speech errors and keep that. Um, I mean, when I started YouTube, I, I uploaded 20-minute videos. Right. Um, and I've got to this point now where I've got to make a compromise, not of who I am, but um, if, I, if I want to inspire people on a wide basis, I've got to sort of say, right, I need to get a large audience, but I want to keep my integrity as well. So if I was to be completely integral and do 30-minute videos, no one would watch it. So I wouldn't be inspiring anyone in yeah. that sense. So it's getting that balance, yeah. and I think that's really important. And just to make me jealous, what, I mean, how many, what's your total view count? Because we were um, talking about this earlier on. Okay. I think it's around 9 million at the moment, wow. um, over three years. I mean, I know loads of people that have overtaken that with one video. Yes. But in life, yeah. you're always going to find someone who does more than you. Always someone. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's just the, the interaction with people, which but I find fascinating. I mean, it is, it's probably hard for you to even comprehend that, but, but that is phenomenally 
extraordinary to, to you know that couldn't have happened no. in the such recent past completely i mean i'm just a guy at home with a computer yeah. webcam technically i'm just talking to a bit of hardware in my room and somehow it has been viewed by this mass um and you know furthermore i go out and meet them around the world right. and it, it's just a crazy experience and I mean, has it given you the, the desire to then follow that? For, I mean, because that, that's what I think is interesting is what, where that... I think a lot of people working in this industry are going to look at that and go, well, where can that lead? Right. But maybe it, that's the wrong question. Maybe it doesn't need to lead anyway. Maybe that's it. I, think I don't the, know. I think the big uh, or miscomprehension of the issue is that people think that once you're on YouTube, that's where you've got to be to make it. You know, you're on YouTube, that is it. It's not. I think it's a good platform to get onto what you want to do. It's a good networking site. Um, you can do whatever you want. There is that freedom, uh, and because of the mass um, interaction you get, you, you hopefully have more of a chance to finding it. Right. I mean, in some way, that video that just showed it was called my YouTube story. I, I sort of use it as a CV. You know? Right. It's, and it's a, it's a media where you can actually see me and who I am, as opposed to just text on the screen. Oh, so if you were going to so if you were I don't know, but if you were going to apply for a job, well, you'd send that link. Well, I've been <laughs> applying recently for a job lately, and on my CV I actually have links to my YouTube videos. Right. And a lot of people look at that and go, what, "What's he playing at?" But yeah. just give it a chance, you know, be yeah. open-minded, and this is new technology. And have you had a response to that from potential employers? I mean, I'm no, not, not yet. I'm still trying. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for the reason I just we took expressed. one look at his YouTube yeah. video, and that was it. Yeah. He was at the door. <laughs> <laughs> now, can you tell me about, uh, about Stick Aid and, 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 uh, and winning Upstaged and what that was all about? Um, yeah, I mean, I like to take part in a, a variety of things. Um, Upstage was a BBC show in 2008 um, with Endemol and BBC, which was six hours in a glass box, entertain the nation. Um, voting was done online. And what happened was we, I got contacted and so did other people off YouTube, and they wanted us, basically. I knew what they were trying to do. They were trying to get us to move across our viewer base and make us knock each other out of this competition. And without telling them, I said, guys, let's work together on this. And we went along and we did it and we won the grand final. And by the percentages of votes, we just thrashed everyone. Right. And there was this big frustration because we weren't a traditional act. And to be brief about it, we were against very talented musicians, you know, people playing on guitar and that. And, um, you know, that's great, but because it was online, if I want to see someone play guitar, I just look it up on YouTube. As yeah. our act was about interaction, they're in the moment, you know, discussing with people what do they want us to do, even if it was crazy, putting post-it notes on us and rolling on the floor. But people like that interaction, and that's why we did get the votes. Right. Um, in terms of Stick Aid, um, the past three years I've done something on stickam.com, which is a webcam live website. Uh, and it's a part of my ethos. I mean, people who are geographically isolated around the world are able to have a, a common goal and achieve it, where um, I would broadcast a 24-hour web chat uh, and people sponsor money to go towards... I chose UNICEF because it's a global charity. Uh, and, every, you know, three years ago it was in my bedroom on a webcam. Uh, this year I, I worked in a TV studio. Uh, and last year I did it in LA, Los Angeles. And, you know, this is absolutely surreal. Uh, I, without internet, without YouTube, I wouldn't have achieved any of this. And if I've gained a lot from it, then m my, my belief is why should no one else have that opportunity? And that's yeah. what I hope to do with my videos. Fantastic. So, I mean, what, and do you have plans that you can reveal of things you're going to do next? I mean, have you got...? I, I would love to work, you know, plug it out in the BBC, you know? <laughs> that would be great, because um, the BBC is, you know, with iPlayer and that, is really trying yeah. to push it forward at the moment. Um, the thing is, I've, I've worked with trying to help revolutionise the education system, uh, with mental health therapy, because I did psychology. You know, th this technology can help all of that, but a lot of these companies are on their high horses, like you know, what is this? It's entertainment. And, you know, YouTube is very entertainment-based, but there is so much more to it, and it's just about, you know, taking that risk. But unfortunately, we're at a time at the moment where companies aren't really willing to make that risk. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Mark. We're going to get... We'll, we'll yeah, carry on. We'll carry on. Yeah, now, I should just before... Because we've, we've only got five, five or so minutes left, I'd love to uh, open questions to the floor if anybody's got any questions for any of the marvellous panel. There's one over there, straight away. Uh, Nick, Nick Radlow from Input. I just wanted to continue that question to the other people, whether they thought there's any way they can make a living out of the kind of the internet activity. I mean, it's such a rarity. Uh, and the thing I find with the internet is it's, it's all about integrity, as I said earlier on. And I mean, in terms of sponsorship, if, if I'm on a video and I'm drinking a can of Coke, it's an example I always use, it's because I want to drink the Coke. So therefore, that is good advertising. But when you get people that are on their videos that are standing there with something which was blatantly put in their hands, yeah. then it's not great. So, I mean, this is just new grounds that we're sort of dealing with. Uh, but in terms of making money, 
I make nothing from it. The amount of money I've spent on cameras, batteries for my cameras, outweighs how much I've made from my videos completely. Uh, and, you know, people do make a lot from it, but it is such a rarity. Mm. Um, but for me, I've, I've gained a lot from it, which you couldn't put a price on. I've met great people. Um, I've had Gordon Brown do a response to me on a video. I mean, this is stuff that you can't yes. put a price on. Yeah. Um, and I think that, as you were saying, in terms of the BBC is a great place to go to for comedy, um, you know, it is about using it as a platform to then go on other things. And if, you know, there are companies out there that have the resources and you see someone on YouTube and you think they would be good in this way, by taking something which is a hobby and paying them to do it, you know, the chances are they're going to do a much better job with it. So. And I mean, the, the danger is then the, 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 what drove you to be that popular in the first place, the passion, the clarity, the honesty, the integrity, <laughs> that's, that's when it's un, it under is. threat, isn't it? I mean, but that's always the balance you've got to strike. Completely. You know. But that's just life. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, my friend and I was started doing just chatting, doing audio podcasts, and not not very long after starting, we we now get about a quarter of a million downloads a month. And although it's kind of adult content, um, we get a lot of under 16s writing, and I'm getting loads of um, fan mail, hate mail, and people want advice. And I'm just I'm just chatting about thing my life, and I find that quite um, strange. Like, who who do I talk to about that? Um, I wonder if you get guys get people approaching you and asking you. For your opinions on yeah <laughs> I've, I've, I've done videos um where i've actually like before christmas i came out of therapy and i did a video which was you're not alone and it was about this is what i've been through i may come across as confident i definitely wasn't confident three years ago um and that you know if you're out there there is always someone and for me it's about inspiring people to you know look to other people i'm not saying i'm the answer but unfortunately i've been getting emails people telling me their entire life and it sort of puts that responsibility on me and I feel like, you know, where do I draw the line? Because I had an experience where there was someone who came to advice once and a few weeks later after I gave her advice, she said it was great. I didn't speak to her again. She then took her life. And it's that moral dilemma of now. We live in a, an online community now where millions of people we're contacted with. And, you know, it's about you not taking too much responsibility, that, but realising if people are going to get involved with this, they have to take responsibility for themselves as well and realise that you can only talk to so many people. So, you know, if you get negative comments, if you get people that are angry at you because you're not responding, um, just realise it's, it's not your fault. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all right. Any, anyone else? Right up the back there. <laughs> <laughs> Making them run. <laughs> That'd be a really uh, good yes. question. <laughs> um, just trying to work out, if the BBC did open up to user-generated content, then we'd obviously be stuck with all of our standards of policies and compliances that we, we already have as programme makers. Would it limit your creativity too much to try and apply those policies and standards to your content, and therefore is it something that isn't worth looking down the road of? You know, people on YouTube who are making their content do it because they're passionate, and I think they'd be overwhelmed if they were approached and you know getting involved with this for example was saying recently and very rarely do i get contact from people who are in the profession you know maybe it's their belief that maybe they get contacted by so many but i know thousands of people out there who would be absolutely you know gasped to to, to, to get interest and it's you know if you bring them in and you say well we like your content but we need it to go to these um wh whatever your conditions are then, you know, compromise can be made, because at the end of the day, it's, yeah. it's your call. And Thank you very much for listening. And I'm really sorry to all the people who've Twitted in, because I didn't... We haven't read one of the Twitter. I've only just realised We did, we did, we did cover some of Have we been covering yeah. it? Oh, well done. You did it. Good. I'm well, glad we, you... did. <laughs> we did it. Teamwork. Somebody <laughs> said bum. Did and they I say noticed. We did notice <laughs> bum. Someone so. at the BBC put bum in yeah. a tweet. <laughs> I know. Comedy, eh? Pace is going to the Price. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> but um, thank you all for listening and sitting through it and watching, and uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, panel. Sorry. Thank you.